And Sunday evening on BBC One starts with Pam Rhodes in West Sussex with this week's Songs of Praise. Travel to three. Is this the last taste of summer? As a famous peal of bells rings out across the English countryside, welcome to Horsham in Sussex for Songs of Praise. <laughs> New Hope and Secondhand Clothes. A mighty sound from the girls and boys in blue. And Life Needn't Stop When You Retire. This is the Causeway, an elegant street of weatherboarded and timber framed houses. But you mustn't run away with the idea that Horsham is nothing more than a sleepy old town because its centre is dominated by the offices of the Royal and Sun Alliance Insurance Group, which employs about 2,000 people. The headquarters of the RSPCA is in Horsham. And just about 12 miles up the road is the country's second busiest airport, Gatwick. But enough remains of old Horsham to justify the guidebook description of it being steeped in history. In fact, here at the end of the causeway is the oldest and possibly the loveliest building in the town, the parish church of St Mary the Virgin. Well, even though St Mary's is about to clock up its 750th birthday, it is still full of life. In fact, at the 9 o'clock service on a Sunday morning, they regularly welcome along about 350 people. And the place is packed this evening as members of churches from right across Horsham join together to sing in every corner. wonderful church it's 750 years old it has a magnificent tower which is Norman uh, with a brooch spire that's four sides going into eight sides 150 feet high and a wonderful nave and chancel roof with a constant level ridge line John Ebden not only loves the parish church he looks at it with a knowledgeable eye because he's a builder or was retirement when it came was a shock one moment I was in charge of doing all the work in a regional building company uh, and then the next moment having had charge of lots of men and uh, directing operations I wasn't anything and I hadn't got charge of anything or anybody <laughs> but not for long vicar to the rescue John was asked to take charge of the fabric of St Mary's and oversee the church's massive restoration program New piece of stone cut right back to the line of the glass. Renovation work of this scale on old buildings costs a fortune and I'm sure many people yes. would say that that sort of money should be better spent on people. Yes, I can understand that. Um, but the church is the central focus of the Christian community here. It's also the oldest building in the town. 
so it's part of our heritage. But the church is not just a building, it's living stones, it's living people. And people's lives are reflected in their faith and they must get involved in the community. So the church is the focal point of that. Watching Susie Smith helping other people, you'd never guess that barely a year ago, she couldn't help herself. It had been one disaster after another. Marriage breakup, house repossession, alcoholism. Life reached rock bottom when she lost her job in Spain and all her worldly possessions. I came back to this country and within two days I was actually uh, in, put in a mental hospital and was actually sectioned which means that you can't leave. I was suicidal. Um, I just thought, this is the end of my life. I didn't know what I was going to do, where I was going to go. What happened then? I got to the stage at, at Christmas time last year um, where I thought, I've got to do something. And I, I started to pray very, very hard, something I hadn't done for a long, long time. I was just talking out loud to anybody. And uh, I, I remembered a, a song I used to sing um, when I was in the choir years ago. And it was, lead me, Lord, lead me in thy righteousness. I felt like he was leading me. With a great deal of help from social workers, and friends. I was very fortunate to move to Horsham, which is where I wanted to be. I needed God's forgiveness, and I suppose I really needed to forgive myself. And I realised that before you can start loving and caring for other people, you've really got to love yourself. Yeah. All right, okay, nice to see you. Yeah. See you again. And with God's help, I, I can actually look at myself in the mirror now and think, yeah, I'm not so bad after all. And it's, I think it's reflected now in, in what I do and, and who I am now. Someone suggested getting in touch with the Salvation Army, so I did. And uh, not only have they furnished my flat, but they've taken me into their church and 
really supported me through a lot of things and I'm just so grateful. I feel happy for the first time in oh, a long, long time. It's a splendid setting for a school between the South Downs and the High Weald. But Christ's Hospital, the original Blue Coat School, exists primarily to educate able children from less well-off families. It's a hundred years since Christ's Hospital moved from the City of London to its new site outside Horsham. Nowadays, many pupils like Gigi, Mary, Sally and Alex come into Horsham to build bridges with the local community. Working with preschool children is one of the most popular activities. The Queen spoke to the mirror, but this time the answer was different. You, Queen, are fair, but the fairest of all is Snow White. But it's two-way traffic, because the people of Horsham often visit Christ's Hospital to enjoy the school's outstanding music making. Here are all 800 pupils and the school's mighty organ at full throttle.
opened by Dame Thora Heard. Now, there's a name that I recognise, and it's a clue, too, that this centre is not all that it seems. It looks like a perfectly ordinary tea shop. Ah, but here's another clue. The menu with a cross on. So what's it all about, Doug? It all started in 1990. Groups of people from different churches met as house groups. And at the end of the meetings, they all came together and they shared a vision. And that vision was for a place where they could all meet together and with members of other churches and with people who weren't members of churches and meet in a, in a quiet, relaxing atmosphere. It is evangelism, but it's not overt. But if somebody wanted to know what it was about, then obviously we would share the message with them. Why we're doing it, it's our service to Jesus. Everybody that, that is here is a volunteer, apart from myself and, and one other part-time person. We offer them training in listening, so that if somebody was to ask them a question or if they wanted to share something, the volunteers won't be sort of taken by surprise. They know how to respond appropriately. Upstairs we have a bookshop and a gift shop and all sorts of Christian books and Bibles and, and things like that are sold. During the week we have other activities. Friday night, young people meet here, and also from that, some of them go out and evangelise on the street and, and invite people back. It's really good in as much as it's a good stepping stone from the streets to the church, that people can actually come in in a relaxed atmosphere, talk to real Christians about real issues. It's just great to see other Christians who've got the same faith as you, working alongside and have a relationship with them. It's good. And it's just you have a prayer diary, what's that for? That's, prayer has always been central to, to the life of the centre. Right from its very first inception, we always saw prayer as being central. And we have the prayer diary out. It's, a, it's available for anybody to come in and write in prayer requests. And people, again, from all of the churches meet every Friday afternoon, and they'll look at the prayer diary and they'll offer those prayers to God on a, on a weekly basis. And what do you think it's done for Christianity in this time? It's built people up. It, it, it's made them think more about doing things together. Why do things separately if you can do them together? And I think this is how people are, are thinking. They're actually looking at what unites them the, rather than what divides them. Twice a week at St Leonard's Church Hall, the Alpha Project aims to help a group of people who are too often shunned or misunderstood. It's a church initiative run by Sheila Bruford. 
it's a self-help support group for people who are suffering or have suffered some sort of mental health problem. Some are long-term, such as schizophrenics, and some are shorter term, um, such as you or me, who have had a nervous breakdown and hopefully are recovering sufficiently to be able to go back into society. A lot of them will be lonely because they aren't understood. And the general public tend to be fearful of something that they can't understand. The album has helped me to, to try and mix with people a bit more. And it's set people as they are, and it's set me as much. To come to terms with my illness. So we do it sort of in our own sort of way, help each other. And I think it helps. It must help. It seems to work. I don't know. We've been here for quite a while, and we've. A lot of we've seen people who have actually come here and, and why they've improved their own lives by coming here. So we must be doing something right. <laughs> we provide um, friendship for them and they make friends and hopefully carry the friendships out into society. Several have said from time to time how grateful they are for what the project has done and they do realise that the church is there supporting it. And the main thing is that. Sheila is brilliant at organising outings. We have outings once a month. We've been to places where I wouldn't even be able to or even dream of going on my own. Everyone's accepting because we've all got problems. So everyone's, you know, they don't really take any notice. It's just nice. You, you feel quite normal. Whatever normal is, you feel it. A year after these headlines had almost been forgotten, newly retired teacher Peter Hooker was himself struck down by necrotizing fasciitis, nicknamed the flesh-eating bug. He was one of the few victims to survive. I woke up on the, in the middle of the night um, with this very, very painful leg. They thought I'd got a blood clot, so they treated me accordingly but uh, then that didn't work and they thought I was possibly bleeding to death. 
The last thing I remember was being wheeled into a theatre, and that's the last thing I remember for two and a half weeks. What do you remember of it? Well, I think I was a bit numb, really. You don't take it in entirely. I mean, everyone kept telling me he was very ill and he might not recover, and you just sort of get through it somehow. But um, I, I told the vicar about it, and I knew everyone was praying for us. And I was very upheld by all that prayer. I could feel it and sort of holding me up and supporting me. And what were you that. actually praying for? Oh, I don't remember what I prayed at that stage. I know I prayed for him each night. I think a lot of it was, was simply a shriek for help in, inside me, you know, without conscious words or anything. And when you came to, what state of mind were you in? Uh, I suppose I must say peaceful. I didn't. Uh, contrary to everybody's expectations, panic or anything like that, I realised that in order to survive, my leg had had to be amputated. Where did that sense of peace come from? I didn't know at that time. And later? Well, Prudence explained to me afterwards that there had been a lot of prayer said for me, and I have to assume that that, together with the healing hands of the doctors and nurses, brought about my survival. Were you someone to whom prayer was important anyway? It was beginning to be. It wasn't easy. Prayer is never easy. And I hadn't found it easy up till that time. You had to face the possibility of your own death. Does that make you reassess the value of your life? Oh, yes. I'm very aware of my own mortality, if you put it that way. Um, and life is very precious, you know. In fact, I've got it is, you know, wonderful. I'm here. I'm alive. Yes. Fill us, O Lord, with your Holy Spirit, that we may go out with eagerness and joy to love and serve you in holiness and to do your perfect will for Christ our Saviour's sake. Amen. Amen. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you for his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Next week, I'll be heading north to Cheshire and the beautiful village of Bunbury. Join me there as the whole village unites to celebrate its harvest festival.